one of the things that I talk about in the book is, you know, how to improve your poses, adding tilts, adding some flow and rhythm to the drawing. So this right here is, is an example of just a really basic boy character. The A version here is even, same. It's very twinning, right? Everything on it is twinning. It's all exactly the same. And then I showed in B here that this is how you can break up that twinning by basically just adding a few tilts and shifting weight on one side, you know, throwing the pelvis over, one arm's a little higher than the other. All those little things that you're doing, now I have more rhythm through it. There's more flow to the line. This is probably even a better example. You know, if you wanted to do a pose that's sort of a shy, shy kind of girl pose, and she's kind of looking away. I mean, I don't even have to have a facial expression on this to be able to read the attitude. I think A could work. You know, it's not like it's totally broken. I think you'd still want to tilt the head to make it kind of even cuter and kind of looking away or something. But it is pretty just straight up and down. And, and really, that's what I see in computer animation a lot and in 2D. You know, we always have to push ourselves to, to kind of get some kind of a flow through the drawing. And there's there's some flow in A. I'm not going to say that there's, there's certainly flow to the line, but you don't have the rhythm that you do in B. And that kind of sets me up here to my definitions. You know, Dave and I, we talked for a while about, okay, what do you, because when Glenn said it's tilts, flow, and rhythm, I was beating my head kind of going, well, I always thought flow and rhythm were about the same thing. And so the more I thought about it, I came up with some definitions here. You know, tilts, that's pretty obvious. Flow, I said, this is the way the outlines of your drawing and character flow one to another. You can have flow in a drawing or a pose, but not have rhythm. Flow is made up of curved lines that move from convex shape to converse shape. And I put that last part because what I'm talking about there is if I were to draw a leg, this is the old Preston Blair thing. I may have a straight here and a straight here, but I'm going to have a convex, and that's converse. You know, here's the foot. This is a side view. So that is automatically giving me a nice S-curve a nice flow through those lines. Even, even if this is a pretty straight and this is a pretty straight, I'm getting that flow through the lines. To me, that is starting to set up rhythm, and this is where I kind of delineate. Rhythm, I say, is the big picture of your pose. It's the way the positive and negative shapes work together to create movement in the pose. Flow can be an element of rhythm, but not vice versa. Some people may agree with that and some may not. Rhythm needs curved lines, rounded shape, and some opposing straights to work best. So I've even given a little bit of a formula, if you want to call it that, which there is none, but I'm kind of throwing out an idea. And this was a drawing I did, and this is probably what I should have started with. I tried to come up with a drawing that showed A, the kind of stiff computer pose, and then B, redrawing it with flow, and then C, showing it with rhythm to really kind of show the difference between flow and rhythm. To me, what I'm trying to get here is work with the negative spaces here too, you know, which I think work a whole lot better and flow and have rhythm together more so than the other ones. You know, you kind of, this goes right through here. So it is about line of action, but it, to me, rhythm is all about the overall pose. If you've got the line of action, if you've got flow in the line work, if the shapes are flowing into each other right, you're going to have a rhythmic drawing. To me, rhythm, like I said, is the big picture of how the whole thing works together as one thing. You know, this really applies to computer animation in a big way, especially in that middle drawing and the left drawing where his rear is sort of coming out further screen right than his leg. And you have this hitch here. It chunks uh, left and his leg attaches, whereas you're able to complete that line in this graceful swoop on the right. This is exactly what you struggle with computer animation. You know, the character may not be shaped that way. It may not be possible even to get that, but it's the search for it. And it's sort of the willingness to break and bust the rig and sort of mobilize as many resources as you, as you have to make this kind of rhythm happen through the poses, I think is like so crucial. But this is a fantastic example of what computers will tend to give you this sort of chunky result chunky through the chest, chunky in the, the way the legs connect, the arms connect, 
and all that. And it's your job as a computer animator to try to smooth that out and try to make those lines connect in a way more like uh, Tom's drawing here. Well, you can even see it in small areas like right here in the wrist, right? Rather than having that go into there like that, it's here now it's kind of coming out of here. And then likewise here, and same with down here, you know, it's flowing right into that yeah. hand rather than creating this block shape. Wow, it's just amazing what tiny, tiny pose changes can do. You're sitting there in CG and just rotating stuff, and if you don't have this sense for, you know, what makes stuff appealing and flow, then you're going to get stuck with what the computer wants to spit out, which is that boring stuff. Or you'll make a pose that doesn't flow well, and you'll have posed it, but it doesn't do it well. Yeah, well, like even with Mushu, this is his general head shape, right? When I was first designing him, you know, I put the neck down here. And because uh, that's where you'd normally connect a head in general, right? You know, if it was a, a person, you know, you'd connect the head somewhere around here, right? So I, d I used to do that. And then one day, Ruben Aquino, who was the animator of Shang, he said, well, he's kind of, he's such a snake-like character. Why don't you connect it back here? So it came kind of, the connection point came here rather than here. And then it would flow right right through his jaw into his neck, you know, rather than getting this angle, you know, here. And as soon as I did that, I was just like, oh, that's it. That's it. It was, it was a minor, minor thing, but it, it created a flow and a rhythm and that kind of then went through the whole body. And I could still do the chest thing. I could, you know, throw his chest out and do, and you know, break it and add an angle here. And then I can even cheat it. I could, you know, there were t times I did a take and I would just throw the neck below him, right? I wouldn't have it connect here. I would do there, imagining that it was still connecting up there. You just didn't see it, right? So I could cheat it all I wanted and still get that fun, you know, when you want to, when you have a take, you just want to see this, you know, exclamation point shape out of your character that would give me that so i could still break it i guess is what i'm saying as long as it made sense to me that oh, okay yeah that's going through here and connecting back there <laughs> you're just not quite seeing it it's, it's just at a straight angle flow and rhythm can also be part of your character design i guess is my point and really should be